Okay, Magic Maker. So today we are wrapping up our series on the belly fat code, right? It is my signature program that I walk, I've walked hundreds of women through. And, you know, I really wanted to help people understand what happens in this program. And what, what are the three ways that you can lose belly fat or the three steps it takes to lose belly fat. And one of the biggest things that I want you to take away from this series is that there's a method to the madness. I am not that coach that just says, get, try this, try this, try this, try that. There is a method. And I have been, I've been working with coaching women since 2008 and over the course of the, that, you know, multiple decades of coaching women, I've coached thousands of women. I've seen thousands of bodies transform. And I know that over the years, when I had a systemic approach, I got the best results. I know that when I give you just a little piece of the puzzle and let you get, you know, take that puzzle piece, make it work for your life. And then I give you a second puzzle piece and a third puzzle piece and so forth. Then you get long lasting results. I want to put myself out of business. I want to give you the result. I want to give you the steps so that you know how to easily repeat them. When I give you 500 steps at once, you don't know which one is working, but I also know that you feel overwhelmed. So many women, because a lot of, you know, they always say you're the, your clients are the a representation of who you were in the past. And I am a recovering perfectionist. I am a recovering, like get shit done kind of person. And it took me a really long time to learn patience when it came to my physique, especially when I put the belly fat on and no one could really help me. Only thing I heard was stop eating sandwiches. You know what? I don't eat any fucking sandwiches. So no, that wasn't it. And I'm so, I'm sorry. It took me a while. I had to kiss so many frogs and it, before they turned into a prince. So I want you to, to, to know that I wanted to start stuff like, I hear you. I hear you. I know what it's like to look in the mirror and not like what you see. I know what it's like to try on clothes and you're like, holy shit, I'm going up a dress size. I know what it's like to step on the scale and you'd be like, holy shit, how can I be up 30 pounds? I know that firsthand. I feel that pain. I know that. So when I created the belly fat code, it was this three-step process that I took myself through. And when I took myself through this three-step process, I took other people through the three-step process, they got results. And if they didn't get results, we were at a point where we're like, okay, now we know what we need to work on. All right. So if you haven't listened to the other episodes, you don't need to listen to them in order, but it will make more sense as we start talking through this episode. So we kick things off. Part one, we talked about making smart choices around your nutrition, your workouts, and your lifestyle. And then we moved into creating your own personal code. And this right here, I feel is the crux of my program is that how do you start to make, you know, you hear it all the time, make this a lifestyle. Like, how do we start to break up with these rigid rules? You know, so many people come to me with these rules that they have been either handed down from the gods, I don't know, or you've told yourself, I had a bunch of rigid rules for, for a really long freaking time. And it took me a long time to break those rules because breaking those rules is what is really going to set you free. That's going to help, help you open up to change different things. And right here, the second, the, the second part of the code, this is where most people like slow down to where most people get a little stuck and stalled. I get it. Like I ate, in, I ate the same way. I worked out the same way for decades and trying to turn that ship around can be a bit challenging. So you have to give yourself patience because as much as we say, Oh, I can change like that. No, you can't. No, you can't because it's just like you normally reach for these things like, okay, this is what I normally have for breakfast. So now I'm like, oh, I got to rethink what breakfast looks like. Oh, I got to rethink what lunch looks like. And it's not as easy for some people. Please give yourself the grace. All right. So today we're diving into the game changer consistency, right? So I have what I call my fit girl magic formula. It is that we have amazing habits. You know, I love me some good habits that builds into routines. Those routines give you consistency and it's the consistency that gives you results, right? So by the time we get down here 
we've really distilled what we are working for on consistency, right? Because so many people will say consistency requires you to have discipline, willpower, motivation. No, not at all, right? Because this is motivation is never going to ring your doorbell and be like, hey, girl, hey, let's work out. No, if that happens to you, please call me, right? Willpower is like a battery. It only lasts for but so long. Like how long can you deny yourself something, right? When I was a competitor, I did it all the time. I denied myself for six months and I lost my goddamn mind for weeks on end, right? Don't even talk to me about doubling my what slide. Me and that thing, we were BFFs, okay? So same thing when I see other women, they like diet and they're like, I can't have. And, you know, they are like the Debbie Downer at the barbecue, the Debbie Downer on the holidays. Like, no, don't be fucking Debbie Downer. Here's where I challenge you that you can do it, but it is, I want to say, I used to say 80, 20, but honestly, I'm really feeling more like it's 90, 10. If you were trying to uh, lose the belly fat, it's 90, 10 until we find our, our, our footing, we find our equilibrium and you can, I know you can. Is it a six weeks to equilibrium? Hell no. I wish I really, really wish, but I truly feel like I work with clients one-on-one for 20 weeks. I know that's a long time, but I feel like it takes you a few weeks just to get your equilibrium when I, you know, make some shifts to your nutrition, make some shifts to your workouts till you get that kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm starting to feel like, you know, the, I, I'm starting to feel like I'm in a groove. And once we feel in a groove, then we can start to really like get deep and unpack okay, what's truly happening in your body? Do we need to work on some gut health issues? Do we need to work on some stress stuff? Do we need to work on some sleep stuff? Like what are some of the things after we look at your food and your workout, what are some of the specific things to you that's going on in your life? And so with that, that's why we have to really focus in on our expectations, right? It, it And I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this dose of reality because when you work with me, I'm a straight shooter. Like I'm never going to blow smoke up your skirt because guess what? You ain't got time and neither do I, right? It's not going to happen overnight. I really wish it did. Trust me. Like I said, been there, done that and got the belly fat t-shirt. As we are working through this, the scale is not your best friend, right? Because it's not the scale that you're trying to change. You're trying to change your body composition and to change your body composition requires not the scale, because the best way I could describe it is that there, you know, picture a beach ball, picture a baseball, right? So imagine making this number up. Imagine that baseball weighs 10 pounds, right? So I put it on the scale and it weighs 10 pounds. Then I fill the beach ball with water to make it 10 pounds, right? So that's right now what we feel like. We feel like this beach ball and we want to be this baseball. So that's not, that, that's not going to change on the scale. The what's going to change on the scale is trying to get down to that baseball. So that requires me to do measurements, right? So I want you to do measurements. The second thing, I want you to take pictures. Third, I want you to get rid of the fact that I wore something 10 years ago. Maybe you get, might get back to it, but highly doubt that you're going to get back to something that you wore when you were 30, right? Um, but I'm just setting you up so that you're not like, Kim, I, why can't I wear my wedding dress from 20 years ago? I, I don't know. Like, I just want you to be realistic. Like, let's say, find something that you've worn in the last three to five years, if that's what you want to use, but definitely pictures, measurements. The other thing I want you to look at is, um, sleep. Am I sleeping better? How is my energy? Am I reaching for that afternoon cup of coffee or whatever your, your pick me up of choice is brain fog. Am I not feeling so like, you know, like two second, you know, tape delay. Um, we talked about sleep. Am I sleeping through the night? Hot flashes, you know, are some of my menopausal symptoms dissipating, right? Because trust me, when I had the hot flashes, I literally could be sitting here doing this podcast and I have been doing this podcast and I was just literally drenched with sweat that I had to stop record. So I was like, this is so embarrassing. Now, when I go back, you know, I should have held on to that to just be like, girlfriend, I know exactly what it's like to be sitting there and you're not doing anything but freaking talking. And all of a sudden you're like sweat dripping down your throat, dripping down your face, dripping down your back. And then you're freezing cold. I know that feeling all too well. So let's just set our expectations. Okay. 
Then the second piece is that slow progress is still progress, right? The days of losing one to two pounds a, a, a week, though that ship has sailed. By the time women have come to me, you've been on like about 15 different diets. Our bodies are hip to it. I don't give a shit what my fitness pal tells you or lose it or whatever app tells you that if you go aggressive, you can lose one to two pounds. That ain't happening for you right now. Honestly, if you lose a half a pound a week, take it, right? But again, remember beach ball, baseball, we're chasing baseball and baseball has nothing to do with that damn scale. So measure your inches and let's measure the biofeedback because that's showing improvement. And once we get that biofeedback going, that's going to give you that motivation that you're looking for, right? But the scale isn't always going to do it. And it's not going to happen in in two days. Like I, I wish, trust me, it would make my life so much easier. So it does like the scale isn't going to show all the internal stuff, you know, the, that, wow, I have a little bit more energy. Wow. I don't need that afternoon coffee. That's not going to show up on the scale. So you want to focus also on what you can consistently do. You know, I regularly see, and we, I, we talked about this in creating our uh, code in the last uh, podcast, but it's like, instead of having that list of 50 things, one to three things and start to nail those one to three things. Right. Because if I try to be like, oh, I can eat, Carol, I'm an overachiever. I can do five. No, no, no. I don't care about you being an overachiever. Overachieve those three. And once that becomes like, this is who I am, this is what I do, now we can move on. Right. We keep trying to sprint to the finish line. But here's the thing this is a marathon. This is a true marathon. This is us learning, uh, relearning about ourselves right now in this phase of life. Because think about how many times we sprinted to the finish line. And then how quickly did that weight come back on? How quickly did our old habits come back to haunt us? I want you to learn some new habits, some new rituals, some new routines. So that old habits, as soon as they start to creep back in, you're like, whoa, 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 get out. You know, like you lock the door and kick their asses out. Okay. And so, you know, there, uh, I don't remember who said this quote, but for me, and I'm also going to attach this in uh, for my show notes, but 1% progress every day is 365% improvement over the course of one year. So are you willing to give 1% every single day to this goal? All right. Now, if some people are like, girl, I can give 365%. No, I'm looking for 1% because I know Every person listening to this can give me 1% every day. I know it, right? So 1% is like, you told yourself you were going to work out today. Boom. You did it. You worked out. You honored yourself. You didn't blow it off. You didn't oversleep. You worked out. You told yourself that you were going to have, you know, a half a cup of vegetables every single meal. And you did that. Great. Awesome. Honored yourself. But every single day you honor yourself, at least one thing honor your health. And, you know, I've, I say this multiple times because this is my ritual. At the end of the day, when I'm brushing my teeth and I say, Kim, did I do everything I could today possible to honor my health? This isn't an invite to beat the shit out of myself. This is an invite to be like, hey girl, you know what? You kind of bailed 15 minutes into your cardio session today. All right. Next time we're going to make sure I'm not making it up but we're going to make sure we finish that full 30 minutes when you do that cardio or, you know, Hey Kim, good job. You know, you told yourself you're going to sit down and journal for 10 minutes today and you did it. You told yourself you were going to create a reel for your uh, business and you did it right. Those are the things. So I have days where I'm like, girl, I didn't get it done. And then I have days where I'm like, go me, look at what I did. Right. Those are the things that I want you to start to think about. The second thought that popped into my head, there is a um, a video and it's about ice melting, right? And so um, ice melting. And when you look at it, right? So ice melts at 32 degrees. And so imagine you, you put an ice cube down and you slowly turn up the heat. So like, say that it's like 32 degrees and I'm turning up the thermostat by one degree. So it's 33 degrees. Ice cube looks pretty, pretty normal, right? 30, 34, still looks like an ice cube, 35. And as I slowly ratchet up, up the temperature, at some point, I'm going to start to see some sweating on the ice, right? 
And then I'm going to start to see maybe some, you know, deformation of the ice. Turn it up again, turn it up again, turn it up again, right? And then eventually this the ice is going to, you know, at some point melt. That is what your physique is doing, right? It's most of the work is under the surface. But as we start to work, manipulate, do things, we're going to start to see that sweat and then eventually that, you know, deformation of the ice and so on and so forth. The same thing is like, um, there's a, another video about um, ice, uh, sorry, water boiling, right? Water boils at 212 degrees. And so it's like, again, slowly ratcheting up the, the heat on the, wa the pot of water, water, then all of a sudden it's like bubbling and boiling over. I want you to think about that when you're like, Kim, it's been four weeks and nothing. And I'm like, okay, what's nothing? Really? What is nothing? Give yourself credit that it took you two weeks to make it to the grocery store. So there's that. It took you two weeks to really get into a groove of, you know, getting in more vegetables. Great. It took you in a groove of drinking more water. Right. So I want you before you start to say, where are my results? I'm going to be like, let's go through the laundry list of things that we've been working on. And how long did it take us to get to that point? Because that there's your results right there, right? Well, it took me this amount of time to start to get these new habits, these new routines under my belt. And then we can work from there because once those, those bedrock habits get started, that's when the clock starts, right? Not when like you said, I'm ready, right? The clock starts when we start to get the cornerstone pieces in place and we start to build towards this consistency piece right here, right? And so um, I live in Boston. And when I first moved here, um, we were doing the big dig. Um, I'm going to add that in the show notes because some of you are like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But if you're old enough to have lived in Boston during the big dig. And so there was this, there's a, a road here in Boston called Starro Drive. And so at the end of Starro Drive, there was this big billboard. And it said, Rome wasn't built in a day if it was, we would have used their contractor. And it was totally kind of like an F you to <laughs> the people in Boston. But at the same time, you're in store driving, you're stuck in traffic and you're about to enter like the teeth of the big dig and you're just kind of pissed off, right? So if Rome, <laughs> so I want you to think about your body. If Rome wasn't built in a day, you would have hired their personal trainer, right? That's what I want you to start to think about. Um. And that leads into the mindset shift, right? Like it's not the one to two pounds, uh, uh, one to two pounds a week. Cause you know what? That is for the virgin dieter. That happened to you when the very first diet you've ever, ever did. And it's not about going harder, right? I done a, I've done a whole episode on the four mindset shifts that ladies over 40 need to make. And I'll again, link that in the show notes, but here's the kind of, you know, 40,000 foot view. You have to reframe your, 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 uh, your time, right? Break free from the idea that it's supposed to happen a specific timeline, right? So we, we were like, if you have that rigid mindset that, you know, A plus B is going to equal C, let that go. You know, it's sometimes it's A plus D plus Z plus E is what's going to give you the results. Cause I throw a bunch, you know, a, a, a process at you. And for some people, a, they've already doing it. Great. Some people are already doing B. We're starting at D, but some people aren't doing A, but they, and they're doing B and C. And so it's, you know, really looking at you as the individual. And that's the beauty of the belly fat code is that while it is a group program, I do find ways to make it individualized and customized because I know not everyone's journey is the same, right? We all come at this from different walks of life. Um, the second piece here is the, some people find resistance, right? Thinking that if something that they're doing isn't working, I need to go harder when it's not working. So it's like, we have to reevaluate the effort that we're putting in. And it's not about the hard, it's about the, the different, right? Like uh, thinking that harder is the way to go versus doing things in a different way, a different order. As I mentioned, sometimes it goes A, Z, D versus A, B, C and so forth. Overcoming your obstacles without chasing perfection. 
And trust me, you're not going to nail it. I, I don't nail it, but I want to always say, okay, instead of me thinking that I have to do everything at a hundred percent, go for the B minus. That was the best advice I had ever received. This is probably about, maybe it's almost 10 years ago now. Um, I was listening to a podcast. I believe it's uh, Castile, 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 Brooke, Brooke Castile. And she was like, you know, for the all the perfectionists out there, you know, B minus is just as good, right? Just get it done versus overthinking, over, you know, processing, over, you know, just over everything, trying to be, go for that A plus and then still act, asking for extra credit. And then release the timing, right? You're not, it's, there's never a perfect time, right? Summer is always going to come. Holidays are always going to come. Vacations are always going to come. You know, kids are always going to have something that's going on. Family's always going to have something that's going on. The best time to start is now because I always want you to figure out how to get shit done when life isn't like perfectly laid out, right? Because that's where your rituals need to be. You know, and if you listen to that the last podcast, I'm always like, I'm not asking for you to come up with your 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 three non-negotiables on the perfect day. Like, what are the three non-negotiables when the shit hits the fan day? Like, when everything goes wrong, what are the three things you know you can do? Because that's what's going to get you the consistency. Because when I'm like, oh, if I get out of work at five o'clock, and then if there's no traffic, and then if this, and then... It, I am not going to get shit done because I don't know how many times that I am driving to work on the same route that I have driven 700 other times. There's traffic. And you're like, wait, hold on. This is way more traffic than normal at this time. And I drive at the same time every single day. Like what's going on? Those are the times that I want you to start to plan for. Um, and then here, this last piece, it's really about setting boundaries like being consistent is about setting boundaries and knowing what you're committed to and letting go of everything else so that you can be clear of what you're going to do what you're stop doing so that hitting your goals becomes so much easier this is i see it so many times again like we think we're super women we could do 500 things you know and leap a tall building with a single bound while our cape is like blowing behind us but that's not always the case so i want you to start to really get clear about what your boundaries are what you can truly say yes to and what you can truly what do you have to say no to being clear with your family being like hey i want to get this belly fat off my body so that means that mom is going to need to work out in the morning or whatever you do and you know your partner or a friend is going to have to drive uh drop people off at school maybe it's like hey i need to join a gym that has babysitting maybe it's um going for a walk with my partner after dinner you know it's like maybe it's asking for help asking for support but it's like how do we start to create those boundaries around my time? You know, uh, one of my clients, she is the sole breadwinner for her family. And she just puts so much pressure on herself. And she's like, and she's also a night owl because by the time she, you know, finishes working, gets everyone situated with dinner and homework and all the other gobbledygook, she's like, finally, I have Susan time, right? And so she stays up late and then she's like, and then she doesn't hit our workouts because something, and she's been working out at night and something inevitably happens and she doesn't get her work on it. So I was like, you know what? We need to set a bedtime, right? You have to have a boundary at night that you have a bedtime. And it was like, one of her non-negotiables was to find something that like made her like feel complete at night without staying up all night, Netflix and chilling, Right. And so those are the things that I want you to start to think. So I'm trying to like think of concrete examples for you. You know, for me, my boundary is that I don't take calls before 10 a.m. in the morning. Like the morning is Kim time. Like that is like whenever my time, like whenever something, in, it has to be something cataclysmic to intrude before 10, 10 a.m. for me. And I, that I protect that. Like that's my tiger time. I did a whole podcast on tiger time. I protect that. Like before 10 AM, I am, I am not for you. Like that is Kim time. 
And then my bedtime is my tiger time. Like, you know, I call it my wind down time. And my husband is always like, how long does it take you to wind down? How for fucking long it takes me to wind down. <laughs> is that how long it's going to take me to wind down? So I am so protective of that time. Now, you don't have to be as tigery as I do, but be, you know, be a, like a little like a mean house cat with like a, a chew toy. All right. So I want you to think about as you kind of, we went through this whole podcast, it's like consistency isn't about being perfect. It's about being persistent. What are the things that you can be persistent with regardless of it being a perfect day, a perfect time, right? Because we're not chasing perfect. We're looking at ways. How do you keep showing up for yourself? How do you follow your code? Allow yourself to progress, uh, progress, progress, progress at your own pace. Because, you know, when someone tells me that they're behind, I'm like, behind who? Please point this person out, right? Because most of you are fighting the former version of yourself. And that's okay. I want you to fight that person because I want you to tell that person they need to shut the fuck up because you're not that person anymore. You're on a different path, right? We're on the path to be like, you know what? There's no fast track here. I'm not trying to sprint. I'm trying to get to a point where I am no longer feeling like I need to diet, that this is who I am. This is what I freaking do. This is who I am. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you got this and I got your back, right? I hope you really enjoyed this series and I hope that you are able to take away some nuggets. That was my whole goal. But I also know that, yes, can you do this on your own? Absolutely. Absolutely. But can you be consistent with yourself? Can you do the nuances here? Are you going to be able to pick yourself up when you have a, a bad day? Are you going to be able to, to not get, feel like you need to go hard? Do you need that third party looking over your shoulder? Because that's what I am. I'm that third party who looks over your shoulder. That when you get so down on yourself, when you get so hard on yourself and you tell yourself, all the negative, ugly things that we, as us ladies, our inner critic tells us, here's what I want you to start to say. You know what? I need that third person because I too, I have someone who helps me. Um, and, you know, it's, there's plenty of times when like Kate has to be, like pull me back by the ponytail and go like, stop trying to diet, right? You're not dieting. You're trying to build a lifestyle. And I just, I remember it's like trying to change my habits was like, they were so ingrained in stone with me. And I know that it can be a challenge to make those change. So if you are looking for, looking for a way to uh, crack the belly fat code, ladies, I got you. I absolutely got you. The link below, there will be a uh, link to, um, the wait list for the belly fat code. I open it up once a month for you guys to hop in um, and really like figure out this whole belly fat thing, this stubborn weight loss over 40, because it can disappear. It's not stuck. You're not stuck with it forever. All right, ladies, you're not stuck with forever. And I want to be able to help you with that. All right, magic makers, you know where to find me. Any questions, comments, do me a favor, reach out to me. I love answering questions. Um, there's so much bullshit out there. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I do these podcasts is to minimize the bullshit that you might be hearing around uh, the socials or parties or wherever the hell you're hearing the bullshit. All right, Magic Makers, you got this. I got your back. And remember, it's a process. It's not perfection. And until next time, stay magical.